Hello again. So I had a video request. Um, a friend of mine asked me, um, you know, what the Bible means by lukewarm Christians. So I was, we're gonna go over his passage. Um, it starts with um, Revelation chapter three, starting fourteen through twenty-two. And I'm here using the eSword um, Bible software for PC, which is free to download. Excellent software. I recommend using it for your personal. Um, Bible study. So first thing to do when we come to reading a Bible passage, we got to know who's the audience being addressed and what's the context of the passage. So here in this subheading, this is Jesus talking to the church of Laodicea. And let's see what the Lord has said. Let's start with verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These scenes Says the Amen, the faithful and true witnesses, the beginning of creation of God. I know thy works, and thou art cold or hot, and I would work cold or hot. So then, thou art lukewarm, neither cold or hot, I'll spew thee out of my mouth, because thou hast said, I am rich. And increase with goods, and have need of nothing. And knows that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy me gold, try in fire, that thou may be rich, and white raiment, and thou shalt be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Anoint thy eyes with eye slave, and that those may see it. As many of I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous for and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man he hears my voice and open the door, I'll come into him, and I'll spew, I'll sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcome and sat down with my father in his throne. He that he here, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Okay, so when just reading through this um, passage, there's notice that no mention of anyone has lost her salvation. Um, Jesus never said anyone's going, you know, go to hell or I never knew you. Um, there's no indication of that whatsoever. Um, so Jesus said these people are being lukewarm um, this, this whole passage is actually talking about people who are like living a very carnal life. Now, how do we know that these are still saved believers? Um, a good giveaway is here in 19. As many as I love, he's I rebuke and chasten. So be zealous therefore and repent. So he's talking to the church in Laodicea, whom many of them he loves. He rebuke and chase and be sell so forth and repent. So they're apparently they're being very lukewarm. Right? Now if we go and just look on the word the chastening, let's see if it loads up here. Let's do chastening, for example. It should give you a search through the Bible. And that's look at that chastening. Now, Job 5, 17, some Old Testament, and we get some New Testament verse here, so we'll take time to read it. Behold, happy is a man who God correcteth, therefore despise not the chastening of the Almighty. All right, my son, this is the Proverbs, despise not chastening of the Lord. Neither be wary of his correction. So already, we get more context from this other verses about what does chastening or chastisement mean. That also can mean discipline. Uh, it just means God will correct those who are his children. And here Hebrews 12, 5. So there you have. And have you forgotten the exhorta exhortation. Which speaketh unto you. As unto children. My son. Despise not the chastening of the Lord. Nor faint when those are rebuked of him. So. Here what the Lord is saying is. These people are being lukewarm. They could be you know very worldly. They're not you know on fire for God. But he never said that they're not his children. He never said they're not, not his kids. And the phrase here in 19, pull this down for a second. As may I love, 
I rebuke and chasten. So this is indicating that these are still God's children. And what it means is if when a believer doesn't choose to obey God, God will chastise them. He will correct them. He will rebuke them for their sin and wickedness. He never, never one indication this whole passage talks about the loss of salvation. Right? And if anything, to so spew out of my mouth, where is that? Um, 16, either hot or cold, it's the Lord's using an analogy. Like, have you ever drank like a cold cup of coffee? It's not, it's not really good, right? It, it tastes disgusting. Well, the Lord uses this as an analogy for people who are not living with Him, right? And this could be also referring to as the disfellowship of the Lord. But they're still saved, they're still God's children. Those are not in either one of those verses. Hell's never mentioned. Um, they're never mentioned being dead. Um, they're basically just living in a life of disobedience to the Lord. Um, and we've got more verses. Um, and definitely in Hebrews 7 and 11. Let's read 7. If you endure chastening, God will deal with you as sons. So here you go, right here. So sometimes, to get the proper context, you do need to read to other books of the Bible, right? Now, Revelation is the last book of the Bible. So if you actually read the Bible from the beginning, you already came across Hebrews, and therefore you already got in the context of what Revelation 3, 14 through 22, that the Lord's talking about. And he's talking about the chastising or disciplining his children. If you've read these books before, you already got, have gotten that. But a lot of people don't read the Bible in a chronological order. A lot of people just um, pick any random book to read, and that's, I do not advise anyone to do that. Um, a good book to start reading your Bible is either Gospel of John or Book of Romans. Excellent start to get foundation, especially if you're a new believer. Because um, Paul even talks about chastisement of the Lord. Right, and Paul, if you read take time his letters, he also talks about there's actually been church members in the church of Corinth, in the Corinthian church, where a member slept with their stepmother, which is a family rel relative. And of course, they had exercised church discipline, and but Paul still said they're they're saved. And if you want me to do a another video on that passage, let me know in the comments. I'm not going to include in this video because I want to try and make it quite kind of short. So we know already from reading this false um okay. Notice it says if you endure chastening, God will deal with you as sons. And then, for what son whom has a father chases not? So if God's not chasing you, then that means you're an orphan. That means you're not a Christian. That means you're not saved. Because God will chasten those who are his kids. Right? God will correct you. Um in sin, but you'd never stop being his child. Aaron and then Hebrews twelve eleven. Now no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So the point of correction of the Lord is so you may bear the fruit of righteousness. So you may bear fruit. There's another passage in John. It talks about um Jesus is the, you know, the branch, and we are the branches, and the Father prunes the branches so he may bore more fruit, right? That's to be more in Christ's likeness, but it's nothing to do with salvation. And that's what the Lord does. He'll correct you in your sin, and, of course, repent. It only means a change of mind. I did a video on this. You just check on my playlist. Um, I have a video either on... um. Calvinism, he's completely wrong. Or repent of your sins, mental crisis. Those are two videos I did. Provide his resources to what repentance actually means. But I'm going to do it in this video. Right? And then, behold, as I stand at the door and knock, and you open the door, let him in, I'll sup with him, and he will be with me. So Jesus is saying here, um, once a, the church in Laodicea repents, and this is an analogy the Lord's using as, as restoring fellowship back to the Lord, right? As you open a door into your heart, you let God come restore the fellowship back to Him. The moment of you change your mind and then go back from living obedience to Christ. So, just because someone's lukewarm does not mean they're not saved. 
It just means they're um, living a life of disobedience, and God will, as it says right here in 19, rebuke and chasten. And therefore, a believer should repent. And that's all this passage is really talking about. Again, it's not mentioned salvation whatsoever, but a correction from the Lord. And there's many churches who have not lived a perfect life, many believers, myself included, have not lived life we should have lived, and we have not been living complete obedience. That's because we're not saved by living a good life or obedience. We're saved by believing on Jesus. And I'll have a video on that link in the description of this video. By the way, to heaven, verse by verse, you can follow along and get saved today. So, any else? Wants? And, of course, I want to just point out to Romans 3.17... Thou says, I'm rich, increased with goods, and need of nothing. That can easily happen. Um, I think there's a Proverbs on that. Um, maybe I can find it, and maybe I can might just give it in a video. Where it says, um, Give me neither riches or um, poverty. Right? So they not blaspheme the name of the Lord. So... This church apparently has been very blessed by the Lord. They, they said they're rich, they're in, increased with good. A lot of Americanized Christianity today is like this loud to see in church, right? America is very prosperous and need of nothing. Basically saying they don't need God now, now that, um, you know, they're being v very prosperous. Look what the Lord says. Thou, not though thou art are wretched, miserable, poor, and blind, and naked. Jesus is saying, uh, he's dressing the church here of their pride. That apart from the Lord, they are nothing. And that, I'm sure if you're watching this, you can relate to many churches, at least here in America, where I'm from, where Christians are just very proud people, very prideful and arrogant. Not all of them. There's some that do love and fear the Lord. And there's a lot of them that live a carnal lives and they're lukewarm. But that's all that means. So a takeaway from this is... Um, get on fire for God, live in obedience to Him, um, simply because you love Him and He loves you, and you can have rewards in heaven, right? And our families and friends can go to heaven when we share the gospel with them. Why would we not want to do that anyways? So that's it, and that's the conclusion of this video. Until next time, I'll see you, and God bless.